Buddy, it's Rob. Hey, listen, if you were like me when you first started to metal detect, you quickly kind of ran out of your local parks and ball fields to detect on and realized I need to learn how to get permission. So if you're interested in um, avoiding some of the mistakes I made and learning what's working for me to get permission to detect on homes like this one behind me here, stay tuned. I'm going to share my top 10 tips and techniques for securing that coveted permission to metal detect on private property. I'm actually in my hometown here. Timawak was actually the site of the first, or one of the first premieres of the famous movie, The Wizard of Oz. The story goes that one of the writers, the screenwriters actually was from the town of Oconomowoc and um, somehow finagled approval to have the local theater be the uh, location of one of the first showings of The Wizard of Oz. Well, that's actually a really good question. Um, yes, my metal detector does locate items made out of tin. Why do you ask? Well, yeah, actually, yes, metal detecting does require a brain. So what were the four common mistakes that I made and that I see others make? Number one, not doing enough research up front. Number two, making it too much about you and not enough about the hobby. Number three, taking too long to ask, not getting to the point, not being concise and clear in your request. And number four, perhaps the most important barrier to overcome or a mistake that people make is failing to establish credibility, failing to build trust. These are some of the common mistakes. These are some of the barriers to overcome. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the tips and techniques I use to help avoid these mistakes or to overcome some of these challenges. All right, one tip I have is invest time upfront doing research. And don't just do one type of research. I see a lot of videos and talk to people who like to just drive by potential properties. And, and while that could be effective, you know, a lot of homes are not as old as they look and many are older than they look. So doing research helps you narrow your focus. It helps you prioritize potential opportunities. And we'll talk more about this later. But the research, what, what you're going to learn about that property can come in handy later during your conversation with the homeowner. To make use of plot maps or historical overlays, both of these give you a snapshot as to what that property, what that area looked like 50 years ago, 100 years ago. A particular thing, one thing that I've found to be extremely helpful are what are called geographical information systems. These provide a plethora of information that allow you to identify who might own this property. Um, it's gonna give you a name, the address, a way to contact them beyond just knocking on the door. Okay, here is a very quick demo of a geographical information system, how to find it and what it can do for you. What you want to do is go to your favorite search engine. I use Google. Type in your county name, followed by the phrase geographic information system. Select that. If indeed one of these exists for your county, you'll see it here listed. One does for mine. Click on it. You may have to read and quickly click on a disclaimer. After you do that, it may take uh, 30 seconds to a minute for the interactive map to load. I've done that in advance, so it's preloaded here. This is the area that uh, I was walking in on the earlier parts of my video. Once you're at this point, if you have a property that you're interested in, click on the map to locate the property. 
And almost at any point here, once you're able to see the parcels, you're able to click on any one of the parcels and identify information for that property's owner. So interestingly, this particular property right here houses a very old home. The home is targeted for demolition. The, the area is, uh, they're actually building some new condominiums there that are proposed, so it would be a wonderful property to detect. I've actually gone up, knocked on the door, and while there are people living there, they are renters. They do not have the authority to grant me permission. This gives me um, contact information for the owners. It actually is a business that owns this property. It's a developer. And notice their contact information is indeed different than the actual property address right here. So there you go. This is a wonderful example of how to employ a different form of a research tool, something called a geographic information system. Also, another part of doing research, ask your local officials, friends, neighbors, any contacts that you might meet, whether or not the area has a local historical society or club. So for example, behind me, this is the Oconomowoc Historical Society and Museum. These can be great sources of information about properties. I'm actually in discussion with the the uh, team behind me, the, the folks that run the Historical Society, I'm putting together a presentation for their members in April to talk about metal detecting. What is it? Why do people do it? So tap into these resources that can lead you to potential permissions. Okay, another tip, another suggestion here that works for me. When you actually start to engage in the conversation with a property owner, make sure to not make it about you. Make sure to share your passion about the hobby. Make sure to tell them why you metal detect, what it is you do, and why you do it. I talk about the fact that I love history. I produce little videos like this one to share what it is I learn, what it is I discover. You Ideally, they will give you permission on the spot. If they don't, make it easy for them to contact you. Make sure that also you're presentable. When I do knock on the door, when I do meet with a property owner, um, I try to wear metal detecting attire, a hat, t-shirt. Um, this is the first opportunity though you have to introduce yourself and to alleviate any concerns. You know, this particular area, the area that I'm walking in is a few hours north of Chicago. And around the turn of the century, the areas were populated with quite a few large hotels. And some of the wealthy residents of Illinois would vacation here in northern Wisconsin. After having done some research, I was able to identify the location of a rather large old hotel that burned down around the turn of the century and that now is the location of several private residences uh, of which I've been able to detect on as well. So research absolutely pays off. But it's very important to get to the point, to tell them right up front, I'm not selling anything. I, I, I'm a metal detectorist. I detect local properties to see if there are any old coins, if there's anything that's of value lost, I'd be happy to return that. Would you be open to my detecting your property? It's, uh, it's gonna be a conversation. You don't wanna deliver a speech. Practice it. It's gotta be unique to you and work for you and your style. There's plenty of videos, live videos of folks actually knocking on doors and showing you what it's have like. A, have a uh, document that they can sign that secures for a specified date and time permission for you and anyone else that might be joining you to detect the property. Um, I'll share some links and examples of those forms below. Um, you want to reinforce your identity, who you are. Uh, you, you want to appear more than just some average Joe knocking on their door requesting permission to dig holes in their yard. What I do is share a hobby card uh, or a business card that has my contact information on it, telling a little bit about me. I actually have chosen to include and list my address as well as my email, thehistorydigger at gmail.com. I will also proactively bring up um, what it is I do with the fines, that it's their property, 
If they'd like their choice of something that I find to keep, I'd be happy to do that. This is, uh, I start to set expectations that ideally I'm not gonna give them everything. My philosophy is very simple, it's their property. I'm primarily there for the experience. I wanna capture some fun videos that I could share with you all. You have to put that in your own words. I'm actually gonna link to some scripts that I've seen, that I've found. Um, there are a ton of them out there in some of the metal detecting forums. This is also an opportunity to show a little bit about the hobby and not just tell them about the hobby. I will bring along a few of my recent finds, some coins, maybe a relic or two that, that I can keep in my pocket. I have a, a letter that is a list of frequently asked questions that uh, may be on their mind, but they're not comfortable asking directly. After that I'll include a few pictures of uh, the tools that I actually use, the hand trowel that I use to dig on their property. I'll share with them what a repaired plug looks like. I want them to have confidence that I'm gonna take care of their property, I'm gonna respect it. And then lastly, be a good ambassador for metal detecting. You know, this is something that we wanna to continue to enjoy, hopefully grow, that uh, it's something that not only we, but perhaps our children and grandchildren can enjoy for decades to come. Folks, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be helpful. Please consider liking and subscribing and also, uh, I would love to hear from the rest of you what works for you in your quest to secure permission to metal detect on pri private property. Please leave your thoughts, your comments below, and we can all continue to kind of learn together. Thanks a lot and happy digging. Uh, Dorothy, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. So let me get this straight. You want to know if I have a dog? Well, so. So you're telling me it's okay here if I detect on the curb strips here in this local town? I'll take your silence as approval. We're in good shape, folks.